Hello to everyone. I am going to share my presentation in a few seconds. First of all, I want to thank Dr. Chindal and Dr. Dufour for inviting me to participate in this important webinar. It's my privilege to be here today. Uh, to begin with new knowledge in immunology, my talking is going to be about immunotherapy and recent advances in cancer treatment. But uh, to talk about the cancer immunotherapy, we have to define uh, what is immunotherapy. It is a group of uh, strategies that modulate the immune system to eliminate cancer cells and reduce the secondary effects of conventional treatments. This is a slide to show the evolution of immunotherapy in cancer treatment since the first cancer vaccine development by Cooley in, 19, in 1890. There were many years of exorcism until the late 70s and early 80s when two discoveries the recombinant DNA techniques and the development of monoclonal antibodies brought back immunotherapy in cancer treatment as we know it today. My talk will be divided in four parts, uh, anti-tumor immunity, cancer immune system relation, immune evasion by tumor cells and cancer immunotherapy. About in anti tumor immunity, we have to know that the immune system can recognize tumoral antigens, can identify and eliminate tumor on the basis of recognition of tumor specific antigens, that is to say, immunosurveillance. Antigens can be protein mutated or normal proteins who are overexpressed or who are modified by post-relational actions. All of these proteins can elicit responses or B and or T cells. Different tumors have different mutational rates the, those tumors we have high mutational rates ha, are, have high potential antigen expression and that are those eligible for immunotherapy. For example, in this slide we see that melanoma has a high mutational rate and high antigen expression and is one of the first tumors treated with immunotherapy. But how does the immune system respond? The immune system has two types of immunity. The innate immunity, which is a rapid response, is the first response to any antigen and it compo is composed by several cellular elements such as macrophages, and dendritic cells, dendritic cells would be very important and we are talking about them later. Granulocytes and uh, some sort of lymphoid innate cells like uh, natural killer cells. Innate immunity is important because it's the first encounter with the antigen and it has to make a decision whether to respond or not and which type of response will develop. In cancer cells and in tumors there is a tissue injury and this injury releases a cellular element such as ATP, uric acid, Hitch of proteins, which are also called alarmins or defensins or damage associated molecular patterns. These elements could be recognized by, by host 
pattern recognition receptors which are present in the host innate immune cells activate these cells and begin the inflammatory process. Another cells important in innate immunity are natural killer cells. They are very important in immune surveillance because they are always looking for strange cell surface antigens and when they recognize these antigens they could kill target cells by means of uh, rancines, perforins or by contact cell to cell with fast and fast ligand. The, the adaptive response is a slow response, but it is more specific. It is composed by B cells responsible for humoral uh, immune response and by T cells, which are responsible for cellular immune response. Both B and T cells have a specific anti antigen receptors, which are uh, membrane receptors, has a recognition part of the molecule, a transmembrane part, and a transduction signal fragment. One interaction important for the beginning of adaptive immune response is the interaction between this cell, the dendritic cell, which belongs to the innate immunity, and the lymphocytes, T lymphocytes. These dendritic cells can process the antigen and present it within a molecule of the major histocompatibility complex type 1 or type 2. It presents the peptide to the T receptor. For the activation to begin, the T cell needs three signals. The first signal is recognition of the antigen by TCR. It's very important, the interaction with MHC molecules is crucial, essential. The signal two is co-stimulation. There are um, molecules such as CD20 and B7 family which interact to generate a second signal transduction so important as the first one for the T cell to activate. If this signal isn't present, the T cell become, become anergic. And a third, and a third signal is given by pro-inflammatory cytokines. After antigen presentation, the T cell activates, proliferate, proliferates, and became effector cells or memory cells. Effector cells are going to eliminate target cells and memory cells circulate for months or years and are able to respond for subsequent encounters. The CD4 after activation differentiates in different types of helper cells, Th2, Th1, Th17 and regulatory T cells. These T cells have different actions and are effective in different type of infections, tumors, etc. And some of them are favorable to eliminate tumors and others not. The best response for, to eliminate tumors is mediated by T helper subtype 1 and the less favorable is mediated by T regulatory cells which are inhibitory of the immune response anti-tumor. This is a, another slide where we can see what I have explained recently. 
These are some subsets of T helper cells. Th1, Th17, and Th now inhibits and eliminates tumor, while Th2 and Th22 promotes tumoral growing. This is the picture of how would the immune system act to eliminate tumors. Dendritic cells present antigens to both CD8 and CD4 T cells. CD8 and CD4 T cells activate, differentiate. CD8 differentiate into a cytotoxic lymphocyte who kills directly or by means of perforating grand seam tumor cells. And CD4 acquires a Th1 profile subset which secretes a gamma interferon which increases cytotoxicity of CD8 and NK cells. What is the immune system cancer relation? Immune system acts as an extrinsic tumor suppression factor, can suppress viral infections, protecting from virus-induced tumors, eliminate pathogens and promptly resolve inflammation, preventing the establishment of an inflammatory environment conductive to tumorogenesis, and identifies, of course, and eliminate tumor cells, that is, immunosurveillance but also can promote the initiation and progression of cancer, induces pathways that suppress anti-tumor immune response, cooperates with tumor cells, promotes the tumoral growth and dissemination, and prepares the premetastasic niche. So, here we have that immune system has dual actions, is host protective and can evolve together with cancer cells and sculpt progression of the tumor. It's a process called a cancer immunoediting that it has three phases. Elimination, what is immunosurveillance, here innate and adaptive immunity works well and controls the or suppresses the tumor. Here, the more important cells are CD4, Th1 cells, CD8 T cells, and NK cells. There's another phase, which is equilibrium. There is a cancer persistency in terms of dormancy. There is genetic instability, tumoral heterogeneity. The tumor begins to change, to escape, immune control and uh, the immune system changes too. It is called immune selection editing. And at last or finally uh, there is a phase of escape where those poorly immunogenic transformed cells survived, escape the control of immune system and the microenvironment of tumor became more immunosuppressive. So we are seeing how the tumor can evade immune system. Hanahan and Weiwer describe the hallmarks of cancer which are limitless replication, angiogenesis, tissue invasion, and metastasis. But the fifth hallmark would be immune evasion. The mechanisms of immune evasions are complex and often overlap. First, we have the ineffective presentation of tumor antigens to the immune system. Tumors can hide uh, their antigens or present inefficiently those antigens, so they can't uh, activate T cells. Tumors recruit immunosuppressive cells to the microambient 
environment. These cells are T regulatory cells, myeloid derived suppressive cells, and others. They act by means of inhibitory cytokines or by contact cell to cell by inhibitory molecules. Tumors can release immunosuppressive factors such as TGF beta and IL 10, who suppresses. CD4 and CD8 cells, and tumors also express some molecules that, that are inhibitory of co-stimulation and block T cell activation, such as PD-1. Immunotherapy, we have to think about how it works it works differently from conventional treatments such as chemotherapy or radiotherapy. Here the target is the immune system, not the tumor cell. The immunotherapy needs to reprogram the immune system tumor interactions and has another clinical response criteria. The main approaches of immunotherapy are many. Uh, we can divide it in vaccines, cytokines, monoclonal antibodies, modulation of immunologic checkpoints, and engineered cellular therapies. About monoclonal antibodies, there is a long and wide use of monoclonal antibodies uh, in different types of cancer. Generally, these antibodies block some molecule who is essential for survival or proliferation of the tumors. But the monoclonal antibodies we are talking today are those who act uh, modulating the checkpoint uh, interactions. Here I have to mention these two researchers who won the Nobel Prize of Medicine in 2018 uh, for, his, for their research on checkpoint inhibition. They are Tasuku Onjo from Kyoto University, who researches on PD-1, and James P. Allison from MD Anderson Cancer Center, who developed uh, anti-CTL for antibody. The co-stimulatory signals normally in T cell activation are the second signal by means of interaction CD28 B7 molecules family who, which activates the cell. Later in the normal immune response the T cell expresses CTL4, which has more ability for B7 molecule family. And uh, interacts with, the, with it uh, with a potent inhibitory effect. So the T cell inhibits and the immune response finishes. The Monoclonal antibody uh, used in treatment of cancer blocks CDL4, obtaining a T cell that remains active. In normal response, CDL4 acts to finish an immune response and this other molecule, PD-1, is present in peripheral tissues to preserve ourselves, our cells from a T cells attack. Tumors uses the same molecule, a ligand of PD-1, to block or to inhibit T cell activation and evade T cell action and destruction. 
here we have how these two blocking antibodies could act. In second lymphoid organs, in the case of a patient with a tumor, CTL4 could be inhibiting T cell activation. If you use anti-CTL4, CTL4 is blocked and so the co-stimulatory second signal becomes strong and the T cell can activate, can proliferate, can differentiate and migrate to tumor. In the tumor microenvironment, tumor cells has on his surface PD-1 ligand which recognizes PD-1 and inherits strong inhibitory signals for T cell activation. So if we use their anti-PD-1 or anti-PD-1 ligand monoclonal antibodies, we suppress these inhibitory signals and the T cell could activate again. Which are the possible scenes? So in a tumor, we have a, the scene with immunotherapy, which is a microenvironment of stimulation. Uh, the, the dendritic cells are mature and process and present efficiently the antigens, activates the T cells which acquire a TH1 type profile and the CD8 T cells are activated too and became cytotoxic cells which could eliminate tumor cells. The other, the other is seen is without immunotherapy, where dendritic cells are immature, can't process and can't present uh, efficiently the antigens. The T cells that are obtained after activation or after presentation are Th2 type CD40 cells, which are not effective for eliminating the tumor. And the tumoral microenvironment is full of inhibitory cells like regulatory T cells and myeloid derived suppressor cells, which, by means of TGF beta and interleukin 10, suppresses the immune response. We could see that uh, in this picture where we have uh, examples of how the presence of intratumoral lymphocytes correlates with positive outcomes and the presence in the tumor of T regulatory cells correlates with negative outcomes. These two molecules were the breakthrough of the year in 2013 in Science Magazine and Nature Magazine. This is the, these are, I'm sorry, the immune checkpoint blocking antibodies approved by the FDA admin, uh, now, and which are the indications in different types of tumors. Immunotherapy was first used for melanoma. Uh, and this picture shows this part of the curve, the tail of the curve, that shows that a portion of the patients not only respond, but they became long-term survival patients. This was demonstrated with epilimumab, anti-CTLA-4, in 2011, with pembrolizumab and nivolumab anti PD1 in 2014, and also with atezolizumab anti PD1 ligand in 2000, 
16. Another study demonstrated that if we combined mm, two checkpoint inhibitors, such as an anti-CTLA-4 and an anti-PD-1, we could obtain more responders and long-term survivors. This was in 2017 and the combination therapy. But another tumors also respond to immunotherapy, such as breast cancer and colorectal cancer, tumors that are less immunogenic than melanoma. Talking about cellular therapy in cancer, there are several approaches. Talking about adoptive T cell therapies, we have several ways of, of adoptive cell therapies, but we are talking a little about CAR T cells. CAR T cells are chimeric antigen receptors T cells. T cells with a chimeric receptor. This chimeric receptor has two fragments. One of the fragments belongs to among the variable region of a monoclonal antibody directed against a specific condition, could be CD19, for example. And the other fragment of the <coughs> chimeric antigen receptor has a signal transduction molecule. So in the same molecule, you have recognition and activation, which is the advantage from TCRs that we don't need MHC uh, interaction to, uh, to, to obtain activation. There are different sorts of CAR T-cells, first generation, second generation, and third generation. Second generation CAR T-cells and third generation CAR T-cells has an additional co-stimulatory molecule inside. This is that you have recognition activation and second sign, signal stimulation all in one. How does it work? You have to collect the cells, you have to transfect the cells with the genes that then will be expressed as the chimeric antigenic receptor. You have to do the transfer of T cell with conditioning and then you have to monitor the patient assessing, assessing disease response by CT scans or marrow biopsy, uh, peripheral blood flow cytometry and you have to assess the CAR T cell persistence by immunohistochemistry of bone marrow biopsy, RT-PCR, and flow cytometry of load and bone marrow aspirate. And just in the, the end, the conclusions of this lecture, immune system has many strategies to fight against cancer. Immune evasion is essential for tumors progression and dissemination. Immunotherapy is important in reprogramming immune system cancer interactions. Today, we have many successful immunotherapy approaches for cancer treatment. Thank you so much.